I'm a big fan of the Apollo Lake laptops that have been coming out of China as of late. I've been seeing better quality, better builds, better performance, and really good prices. So I was really excited when I purchased the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro. Hi, my name's Andrew, and this is the full review of the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro. The EasyBook 3 Pro comes in at a nice $279 on sale, and I've seen it as of late even less. I'll put the link below for more information and where you can buy it. But what I'm really impressed about with this, besides the price, is what you get for that price. Here are some key features. First, it's running the N3450 Apollo Lake processor. It's got six gigabytes of RAM, it has an open M2 SATA slot, and it has an all metal build. In addition to the six gigabytes of RAM, you also get 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage, and you also get a 96 milliampere battery. We'll talk more about battery life and charging times later in this review. But what you do get is a solid build, all metal with very little plastic and really very little flex. And it sports a 13.3 inch IPS matte display with an anti-glare coating. It's got a resolution of 1920 by 1080. That's 165 pixels per inch and it has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Now it's not the brightest display at 225 nits, but because it's a matte display, it's not much of an issue, at least not for me. It does have very deep blacks and the colors are a bit on the cool side, but I have to say this has some excellent viewing angles, some really good color accuracy, and this is one of the better full HD panels you'll get out of China right now. At 1.39 kilograms or 3.06 pounds, this is portable, this is thin and light, and it is very mobile. So you can take it with you to meetings, when you're on the go, take it on an airplane, whatever you need to do, this thing is portable. The EasyBook 3 Pro has a very sturdy hinge, and for the two weeks that I've had this laptop, it's held up well. Now it doesn't allow you to open the laptop with one finger however, which is a little bit of a negative but really not a deal breaker for certain. As far as ports are concerned, here's what you get. On the right side of the device, you have your mini HDMI port to connect to a TV or a monitor, you have a USB 3.0 Type-A, and you have your DC in to charge this device. On the left hand side of the device, you have your 3.5 millimeter headset jack, another USB 3.0 type A, and you have a micro SD card slot. Well, that will take 128 gigabyte micro SD cards. Unfortunately, it's missing a USB type C port. I'm a little bit disappointed in the fact that they didn't include one, especially since the fact that this is the standard going forward. I really like the keyboard at 1.4 millimeters of key travel. It's very comfortable to type on. There's very little flex and it has very good spacing as far as the keys are concerned. A bit of a negative is the fact they placed the power key above the backspace key. Sometimes I would inadvertently hit it, putting the device to sleep. And it's also missing a print screen key, something I use quite often. I would say the trackpad is average at best. It is serviceable. It does do Windows 10 gestures. You can do two finger scrolling. Not the most responsive in the world, but overall serviceable. As far as sound is concerned, the 3.5 millimeter headset jack worked well. There was very little interference. Sound was good out of my headphones when I connected them. And it sports two bottom facing speakers. I'm not a big fan of bottom facing speakers, but nonetheless, they did sound pretty decent. Let's hear them in action. When Samsung announced the Galaxy Book at MWC earlier this year, I got really excited. It's the follow-up to their Super AMOLED display variant that they released last year the Galaxy Tab Pro S. I reviewed it, but there were some shortcomings. Volume was decent, there was a hint of bass, although these aren't the greatest speakers in the world, they certainly are much better than many of the Chinese variants we've seen as of late. 
So this is the webcam on the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro. It's actually not that bad. It's certainly serviceable when you need to do Skype, when you need to do web conferencing, this will get the job done. Now the only negative or potential negative that I see is the placement of the microphone, which is just above the keyboard. I think I would have preferred to see the microphone next to the webcam on the top of the screen, but it's still not bad. Now here's what it sounds like when you're typing in a Skype conversation. This has been the webcam on the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro. One thing I'm looking for is good battery life. And as I stated earlier, this sports a 9600 milliampere battery. Here's how it did on the AMD Tech Endurance Test. Under what I call normal use, which is Netflix, YouTube, some light gaming, some Photoshop, and some web browsing under the Edge browser, you're gonna do about seven and a half hours. Now, when you push this device, when you're under heavy use with 100% screen brightness, you're gonna move that down to about three and a half hours. If you keep the screen brightness at 100% and strictly web browse, you're looking at four to five hours. The output of the charger is 12 volts, 3 amps, and it also has a barrel pin connector. It's not USB type C. Charge times are as follows. With the device on, you're gonna get about three and a half hours to fully charge this device. With the device off, you're looking at about two hours and 45 minutes. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't have dual band wireless AC. Instead, it has a slower wireless N. And a lot of these Apollo X lately have had wireless AC. So I was a bit surprised to see that lack of the dual band wireless. Now, it's not a deal breaker, but it's certainly something to keep in mind. It runs Windows 10 Home. It has six gigabytes of RAM, DDR3 RAM, which is good to see, running at its full 1600 megahertz capacity. On the Geekbench 4 test, it did a very healthy 3811 on the multi-core score. Its built-in graphics did 7,055. And it has a 64 gigabyte Toshiba eMMC drive, of which about 45 gigabytes are available to the user. And here's how it did on the Crystal Disk Mark test. It did a 161.8 on the read and a somewhat disappointing 58.19 on the write. That's why I recommend you do the SSD installation. I decided to go with the A-Data 128GB M2 SATA drive, but I do recommend going with something like Transcend, which gets better results. I just happen to have this one on hand. Installation is very easy. Remove the 10 screws from the back plate. Remove the back plate. First look inside, you're going to notice that the engineers over at Jumper did a very good job in a nice, tight, clean-looking innards of this device. They certainly packed a lot in a very small space. Now what you're going to do is remove the one screw, insert your M2 SSD drive, make sure it sits in and seated securely, and then fasten that one screw back in. Make sure everything is secure. You're going to screw your back plate on and that's it. Now you can install Windows on the SSD drive. You'll just have to change the boot order in the BIOS. But other than that, here's how it did on the Crystal Disk Mark test. It did a 504.7 on the read and a somewhat pedestrian 133.2 on the right. That's why I say go with the Transcend, which did much better on the right speeds. But either way, you're going to get a big performance speed boost from this SSD installation. So at the end of the day, can I recommend the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro? And the answer is absolutely. Here's what I like. I like its sharp IPS matte display. I like its good performance from its Apollo Lake processor. I like the fact that it has a solid all metal build good battery life, the open M2 SATA 3 SSD slot, which really makes a difference in terms of performance, and I like the fact that it has six gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. But as with any device, there are gonna be things that I think need improvement, and here they are. First, I was a bit disappointed to see there's no USB-C port, something I think all devices going forward should have. That is the new standard. Unfortunately, there's no wireless AC, there's only wireless N, another bit of a disappointment and the micro SD card speeds were somewhat slow. But with those few negatives aside, I have to say this checks all the boxes that you'd want in a sub $300 laptop coming out of China. You get a really nice display, great design, nice keyboard, good battery life, and an open SSD slot to put your own SSD in, which makes performance even better, making this one of the best Apollo Lake laptops right now to come out of China and at less than $300, making this worth your money.
So what do you think about the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro? I think it checks all the boxes that you'd want in a Chinese laptop sub 300 because it gets it all right. I think it gets the screen right, it gets the battery life right, it gets the performance right, and I like the fact that it has that open slot where you can put your own M2 SATA 3 SSD drive. Now, I do recommend you go with the Transcend over something like the A-Data, the one I use, because you're gonna get better write speeds. But I'm curious to know what you think about the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro. Leave a comment in the comment section below, let me know. I also want you to check out a new website that I've been checking out as of late, and, and it's really good. It's uh, one run by a good friend of our channel, Tim, who runs the tabletserver.com website, and he covers a lot of the things we review here on this very channel. He covers the Chewies, the Cubes, the Jumpers, all the laptops, tablets that are coming out of China, he's covering it, and he does a good job of it. And, I, and the amazing thing is he's running it on a tablet, either a Chewy HI-12, Chewy Hybra Pro or Hi10, either one, but either way, the fact that he's running a full website on a lower end budget tablet, two in one, makes this pretty incredible. And his coverage is really good. So I encourage you to go over to tabletserver.com to check out Tim's great coverage of these very devices we review here at AMD Tech. Coming soon to AMD Tech is a all new unboxing and review of the Chewy Lapbook 12.3. I'm excited about this one because it has the Surface Pro 4, Surface Pro, or upcoming Surface Pro screen, high resolution, non-touch display, and from what I understand, a matte display. So I'm really excited about it. It's running the Apollo Lake processor. I kind of wish it was the Core M3 processor, but I'll, we could live with the uh, Apollo Lake processor. And I'm also looking forward to doing a head-to-head -head comparison between the Laplook 12.3 and the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro, the one we just reviewed. So that should make for an interesting head-to-head -head comparison. And let me know if that's something you'd want. Leave a comment in the comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram, and our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.